Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing really well today. In this bass lesson, I have seven different areas of bass playing and a tip for each. We'll start off with technique. If you want to get your playing really fluid, really fast, and it really doesn't matter what style or what technique, if you're using a plectrum or slap or fingers like I was doing, there's a concept called economy of motion that you need to know. Another way I think about this is having one finger in the future. So if I just break down what I was doing a little bit, I was flying around the neck a bit, but let me take just a simple A natural minor scale. Now, first things first, I'm trying to work on the proper hand position. Proper is a, I don't know if that's the correct word, but I'm using one finger per fret anyway, and I'm starting on the fifth fret with this shape. I'm using fingers one, three, four, one, three, four, one, three. And then when I'm plucking, I'm just going index, middle, index, middle, more or less all the time. But here's the crucial thing. I'm going A, B, C. My third finger is hovering over the B ready to play, even as I'm playing the A, the note before it. Equally, as I'm plucking with my index finger on my plucking hand, the middle finger is ready to go a split second after that. It's all about timing and coordination. And that principle carries on, little finger's ready. Don't worry too much if that little finger is, is a little bit away from the fretboard and maybe the stretch isn't quite there yet in your hand. You can work on these things if you have an injury or arthritis or anything like that. You just do the best you can, okay? You might have to shift around a little bit more. But that concept of economy of motion, just very little movements in both fingers, having a nice light touch, that will get you really fast. That will increase your speed, but ironically, start slow at first, then build up. Right, here's a timing tip. This is a metronome exercise that you can use every day. I love this one. So, that sounds slow, but it's not. I'm feeling it like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's simulating what's called the backbeat, which is like the snare drum in a lot of popular music styles. I played a bass line, then I just played that same A minor scale again. If you've never done this, this will feel quite tricky. That was 120 beats per minute, and I just put the metronome on beat two and four. And this is in Logic, by the way. I've got uh, Logic running in the background. If you have GarageBand, Cubase, you can really easily do this, or you can just set a metronome to half the speed. So in this case, it would be 60 BPM, and it will sound like that. And the trick is to make the metronome groove, to make it sound good. Might take you a while to find it, but I'm tapping my foot, nodding my head, trying to feel those beats and those subdivisions. That's a really good exercise. Next, we have a music theory tip. You can use this on any scale or any mode, but I'll use that same A minor scale. Now, all these dots here, if you play them from the lowest to the highest note, will give you A natural minor. Take the first three hollow circles, the R, the flat three, and the P5, that's the perfect fifth. Those are intervals well worth learning. If you take those first hollow ones, you have what's called a triad. That's just three notes, the first, third, and fifth of a scale. Add the flat seven and the root. You have a seventh arpeggio. Then if you extend the shape a little bit and you play any combination of notes from a scale, you get a chord. So root, flat seven, flat third is a minor seventh chord. So it's a very important concept to understand that a scale gives you a triad, in this case, A minor gives you an A minor triad, then you get an A minor seven arpeggio, and then you can get an A minor seven chord, or you know, you can get an A sus two chord, any combination of these notes played together, you can get different, different voicings of chords. And then of course you can make music from that.
that's what it's all about, make music with these things. But if you talk about any mode, any scale, that will give you a triad, an arpeggio, and a chord. I think it's a really good idea for bass players to learn how to read a chord chart. This is a chord chart from my course from beginner to bassist, and you're about to hear the backing track from it. Now, all of these symbols here are chord symbols. If you have a lowercase m after a letter, it means minor. So that's an A minor chord to start with. Then when you have nothing after a letter, it's just major. So F and C major chords. You can just say F and C. Then you've got like a circle with a with a line going through it. That's a half diminished. You've got a C slash E, that's an inverted chord. Now, if you don't know what any of these things are, the same thing shows up over and over again. So you just learn a couple of things and it's not so bad. Really, you learn to harmonize a scale and you get these chords from that. And it's quite simple to do that. Let me just play a little bit and I'll show you why this is such a good thing to be able to do. I haven't heard this backing track for a long time and I it doesn't matter. I can just read the notes and make something up and this is what you can do too. Actually, what I was doing a lot of there was just the root notes. So A, 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 I, I stuck to a rhythm. Because the kick drum on the backing track was doing that, okay? And then to F, to C. And all that stuff was notes from the key. This is, again, knowing a little bit about music theory, and there's a lot of A minor going on in this lesson. That is the key, that's the scale of this piece of music. So I use those notes to connect those chords. You can then use the chord tones, A minor, and that's what we spoke about before. It's an A minor arpeggio, F major, C major. I don't want to play it like an arpeggio, I want to make it into music. And I make it melodic by using notes from the scale. All of this stuff connects, by the way, and actually that's what I teach in that course if you're interested. I'll put a link down below. This is a great fretboard knowledge tip. You need to know the entirety of your fretboard, and one way of doing that is to learn octave patterns, and here are five. Let's go through them. So if you've got the open E string, it's very easy to find the octave on the very same string. It's actually where that double dot is. I'm sure you know this already. So that's an E and that's an E. So any note can be found on the same string by just going 12 frets across on that same string. That's one shape. The next one, if you, this works on the E and the A strings. If you just play any note, go two frets this way higher and two strings that way, you find the same note. Okay, another one is on adjacent strings. So if you have an E on the second fret of the D string, and you go up eight frets, one, two, three, four, five, six, se or seven if you, if you go up from the second and start counting after it. And on the next string, you get the octave higher. And you can connect up the fretboard incredibly easy once you're really, really familiar with all those patterns. Here's the last one. So you've got an E on the 12th fret of the E string, and you go this way, one, two, three frets, and this way, three strings. You can find all the E's really quickly. It makes learning the notes very easy. It makes navigating the fretboard easy. And then you can kind of make a few things up like this. I'm just playing a minor third above the E. So a G and that in itself has octaves everywhere. So this works everywhere. And you can just make up your own exercises make up music from it, but more importantly, just get to know the fretboard really, really well. Those octave shapes will help with that. Tip number six is to learn songs by ear. I know that people like to go to YouTube, they like to go to tab sites and get the tab for a song. And I know why that is, because some, sometimes it's difficult to hear a bass line. 
So I have several playlists of easy bass songs and what you need to do is just pick a song that you like and then one that has a very easy bass line. A great example of that is The Blue by David Gilmour. It's just one of a million examples I could give you. But listen to that song, I'll put a link below to that in this blog post. It's just a beautiful song, number one. It's a very slow tempo and the bass line is very easy. I can't remember what key it's in, but it's like... It's kind of that the whole way through, a five to a root and it's really not tricky. So depending on your level, you would pick a song like that. You can actually really hear the bass on that. You can hear it doesn't do very many things. Pick a simple song, conquer that, develop a, gain a small win from that, then do a slightly more difficult song. And I promise you, you know, before long, and if you genuinely do this most days, your ear will start to get strong. You'll start to associate these bass lines with, you know, scales, arpeggios, triads. You'll recognize them. You'll recognize the patterns. You'll recognize the sound only if you do this all the time. Okay, last tip is a very, very simple one. And it's just to pick up your bass every day just for five minutes. Hopefully that five minutes blossoms into a longer practice session, but if you don't have any time, you're a little bit busy, just commit to picking up your bass for five minutes. That will do, you can do a lot in that five minutes. You can practice any one of these things for five minutes every day. You can pick something, the timing exercise and the scale kill two birds with one stone. On that note, check out this video. This is 10 different five minute practice routines that will inspire you to work on different aspects of your bass playing. If you do want to check out any of my books and courses, I've got a funk one, an R&B soul Motown one, and that beginner course, I'll put the links below. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.